The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Uh, starting with the differential equation. So, so key point here in this lecture is how do you start with a differential equation and uh, end up with a discrete problem that you can solve. Okay. So, but simple differential equation. It's got a second derivative, and I put a minus sign for a reason that you'll see. Second derivatives are essentially negative definite things, so that minus sign is to really make it positive definite. And notice. We have boundary conditions. At, at one end, the solution is zero. At the other end, it's zero. So this is fixed, fixed. And it's a boundary value problem. That's different from an initial value problem. To, uh, x, we have x, space, not time. So we're not starting from something and oscillating or growing or decaying in time. We're, we have a fixed thing. Think of, a, think of an elastic bar. An elastic bar fixed at both ends, maybe hanging by its own weight. So that load, f of x, could, rep could represent the weight. Yeah, maybe the good place to sit is over there. There are tables just, how about that? It's more comfortable. Yeah. OK. So we can solve that equation, especially when I change f of x to be 1, as I plan to do. So I'm going to change, I'm going to make it, it's a uniform bar because there's no variable coefficient in there, and let me make it a uniform load, just one. So, so th this actually shows you the, that I mentioned differential equations, and we'll certainly get on to Laplace's equation, but essentially our differential equations will not, this isn't a course in how to solve ODEs or PDEs, oh, especially not ODEs. It's a course in how to compute solutions. So the, the key idea will be to replace the differential equation by a difference equation. So there's the difference equation. And I've got, I have to talk about that. That's a sort of key point. That, that uh, up here you see what I would call a second difference, actually with a minus sign. And, and, and and on the right-hand side, you see the load, still f of x. OK, can I move to this board to explain differences? Because this is a key, key step is, given the differential equation, replace it by difference equation. And you've got, the, the interesting point is you have many choices. You know, there's one differential equation, but even for a first derivative, so this if you remember from calculus, where, where did, how, how did you start with the derivative? You started by something before going to the limit, h or delta x, goes to zero in the end to get the derivative, but this was a finite difference. You, you moved a finite amount. And this is the one you always see in calculus courses. u at x plus h minus u of x, just the the, you take how much did that step go, you divide by the delta x, the h, and that's approximately the derivative, u prime at x. Okay, let me just continue with these others. I don't remember if calculus mentions a backward difference, but you won't be surprised that, that uh, uh, another possibility, equally good, more or less, would be to take the point and, com and the point before. Take the difference, divide by delta x. So again, the, all these approximate u prime. And now here's one that actually is big, big, really important, a centered difference. It's the average of the forward and back. If I take that plus that, the u of x is cancel, and I'm left with, I'm, I'm taking, the, I'm centering it. And this idea of centering is a good thing, actually. And of course, I have to divide by 2h, because the step is now 2h. 
two delta x's. So that again is going to represent u prime. But so we have a choice if we have a first derivative. And uh, actually, that's a big, a big uh, issue. You know, do you use down? Uh, one might be called upwind, one might be called downwind, one might be called centered. It comes up constantly in aero and mechanical engineering everywhere. You have these d choices to make, especially for the first difference. W we don't have, I didn't allow a first derivative in that equation because I wanted to keep it symmetric. And, and first derivatives, first differences, are, tend to be anti-symmetric. So if we want to get our good matrix K, and I better remember to divide by H squared, because the K just has those that I introduced last time and will repeat, the K just has the numbers minus 1, 2, minus 1. OK, now first point before we leave these guys. What's, what's up with them? What, what's, what's, how do we decide which one is better? There's something called the order of accuracy. How close is the difference to the derivative? And the answer is the error is of size h. So I would call that first order accurate. And I can repeat here, but the text does it, how you recognize what this is the sort of local error, truncation error, whatever. You, you chopped off the, the exact answer and, and just did differences. This one is also order of h. And in fact, the h terms, the, the, the leading error, which is going to multiply the h, has opposite sign in these two, and that's the reason center differences are great. Because when you average them, you center things. Uh, you, this is correct to order h squared. Okay, and I may come back and find find out why that that h squared term is. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah. Why don't I just second differences are so important. Why don't we just see how, how do we and center differences? So let me see how do how do you figure u at x plus h? This is a chance to remember something called Taylor series, but that, you know, that's a, like, that was in calculus. If you forgot it, you're a normal person, okay? So, uh, but what does it say? That's the whole point of calculus in a way, that if I move a little bit, I start from the point x, and then there's a little correction, and that's given by the derivative. And then the, there's a further correction if I want to go further, and that's given by a half of h squared. You see the second order correction times the second derivative. And then, of course, more. But that's all you ever have to remember. It's, it's pretty rare. Second order accuracy is, is often the goal in, in scientific computing. Uh, first order accuracy is like the lowest level. You start there, you write a code, you test it, and so on. But if you want production, if you want accuracy, get to second order if possible. Now, what about this u at x minus h? Well, that's a step backwards, so that's u at x. Now, the step is minus h, but then when I square that step, I'm back to plus h squared, u double prime of x, so on. Ooh, am I going to find even more accuracy. I, I could tell you what the next term is. Plus h cubed on 6. That's 3 times 2 times 1, u triple prime. And this would be, since the step is minus h now, it would be minus h cubed on 6, u triple prime. OK, so what happens when I take the difference of these two? Remember now that center difference says subtract this from this. So now that u at x plus h minus u at x minus h is 0, 2h u prime, I'm taking the subtracting, that from that is 0, 
two of these. So I guess that we really have an h cube over 3 u triple prime. And now when I divide by the 2h, can I just divide by 2h here? Oh, yeah, it's coming out right. Divide by 2h. Divide this by 2h. That'll make it an h squared over 6. I've done what looks like a messy computation. I'm a little sad to start a good lecture, important lecture, by such a grungy stuff. But here it's the, it makes the key point that the center difference gives the correct derivative with an error of order h squared, where the error if for the first differences, the, the h would have been there. Okay, and we can test it. We actually will test it. Okay. Okay for that? This is first differences. And that's a big question. What do you replace the first derivative by if there is one? And you've got these three choices, and usually this is the best choice. Okay, now to second derivatives, because our equation is, has got u double prime in it. Okay. So what's a second derivative? It's the derivative of the derivative. So what's the second difference? It's the difference, first difference, of the first difference. So the second difference, the natural second difference would be, uh, so now let me use this space for second differences. Second differences, I could take the forward difference of the backward difference. Or I could take the backward difference of the forward difference. Or you may say, why don't I take the center difference of the center difference? All those, in some sense, it's delta squared. But which to take? Well, actually, the, those are the same, and that's the good choice. That's the 1 minus 2, 1 choice. So uh, let me show you that. Let me say what's the matter with that, because now having said how great center differences w are, first differences, why don't I just repeat them for second differences? Well, the trouble is, here, let, me, let me say in a word without even writing. Well, I could even write a little. The, the center difference, suppose I'm at a typical mesh point here. The center difference is going to take that value minus that value. But then if I take the center difference of that, I'm going to be out here. I'm going to take this value, this value, and this value. I'll get something correct. Its accuracy will be second order. Good. But it stretches too far. We don't want, we want compact difference molecules. We don't want this one minus two of this plus one of that. That's not, so this would give us a, 1, 0, minus 2, 0, 1. You, you, I'm just saying this, because, and I'm, then I'll never come back to it, because I don't like this one. These guys give 1, minus 2, 1, without any gaps. And that's the right choice. And that's the choice made here. So you, you, you could just, it's, I'm not thinking you can see it in your head that the, difference of the difference, but, well, you almost can. The, if I take this, yeah, can, can you sort of see this before, without my writing it? If I take the forward difference and then I subtract the forward difference to the left, do you see that I'll have minus two? So there's, there's what I start with. I subtract u of x minus u of x minus h. And I get 2, two minus u of x's. This, uh, this is what I get. Now, I'm calling that ui. So I get, oh, oh OK. Yeah, well, let me just, I better make completely clear about the minus sign. The, the forward difference or the backward difference, what this leads is minus 1, is 1 minus 2, 1. That's the second difference. Very important to remember. The second difference of a, of a function is the function, the value ahead, minus 2 of the center plus 1 of the left. 
It's, it's centered, obviously, symmetric, right? Second differences are symmetric. And because I want a minus sign, I want minus the second difference, and that's why you see here minus 1, plus 2, minus 1, because I wanted plus 2s there. Are you okay? This is the, this is the natural replacement for minus u double prime. Okay, and I claim that this second difference is uh, like the second derivative, of course. And why don't we just check some examples to see how like the second derivative it is. So I'm going to take the second difference of some easy functions. Yeah, very, it's, it's, it's very important that these come out so well. So I'm going to take the second difference let me, I'm going to write it as sort of a matrix. So this is like the second difference. Yeah, because this is good. I, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm inside the region here. I'm not worrying about the boundaries now. I, I, let me just think of myself as inside. So I have second differences, and suppose I'm applying it to a vector of all ones. What answer should I get? So if I think of calculus, it's the deriv second derivative of 1, of the constant function. So what answer am I going to get? 0. And do I get 0? Of course, I get 0. Right? All these second differences are 0. Right? Because I'm not worrying about the boundary in. So now, OK, so that's like check 1. It, it passed that simple test. Now let me move up to. From, con from constant to linear, and so on. So let me apply second differences to a, to a vector that's growing linearly. What answer do I expect to get for that? S so remember, I'm doing second differences, like second derivatives, or minus second derivatives, actually. Uh, uh, so what do second derivatives do to a linear function? If I take a straight line, I take the, sorry, second der derivatives. If I take second derivatives of a linear function, I get zero, right. So do I get, I, I would hope to get zero again here, and I do, right? Minus 1 plus 4 minus 3, zero. Minus 1, uh, sorry, let me do it here. Minus 2 plus 6 minus 4. Yeah, and, and actually that's consistent with our little Taylor series stuff that, that the function x should come out right. Now what about, now comes the moment. What about x squared? Okay, so I'm going to put squares in now. Do I expect to get zeros? I don't think so. Because, let me again test it by thinking about what second derivative. So now I'm, I'm sort of copying second derivative of x squared, which is? Second derivative of x squared is 2, right? First derivative is 2x, second derivative is just 2. So it's a constant. And remember, I've put in a minus sign, so I, I'm wondering, do I get the answer minus 2? Right, all the way down. OK, minus 4, plus 8, minus 9. Whoops. What's that? What do I get there? What, what do I get from that, from that second difference of these squares? Minus 4 plus 8 minus 9 is? Minus 2. Good. So we, can we keep going? Minus 4 plus 18 minus 16. What's that? Minus 4 plus 18 minus 16. So I've got minus 20s plus 18s. I got, or rather, um, yeah, I got minus 2 again. Minus 9, 32, minus 25, it, it's right. The second differences of a, of, a perf, of, a square, of the vector of squares, you could say, is a constant vector the, the, with the right number. And that's because that second difference is second order accurate. It not only got constants right and linears right, it got quadratics right. Okay. So that's, you're seeing second differences. It, we'll soon see that second differences are also 
uh, on the ball when you apply them to other vectors like vectors of sines or vectors of cosines or exponentials, they, they, they do well. Okay, so that's a, just a useful check which will help us over here. Okay, can I come back to the heart of the lecture now? Having like prepared the way for this. Well, let's start right off by solving the differential equation. Okay, so I'm bringing you back years and years and years, right? Uh, solve this different, solve that differential equation with these two boundary conditions. How would you do that in a systematic way? You could almost guess after, after a while, but systematically, if I have a linear, I notice, what do I notice about this thing? It's linear. So what am I expecting? I'm expecting like a particular solution that gives the correct answer one and some null space solution or whatever we want to call it, homogeneous solution that gives zero and has some arbitrary constants in it. Give me a particular solution. So th this is going to be our answer. This will be the general solution to this differential equation. What functions have minus the second derivative equal one? That's all I'm asking. What are, what are they? Okay, so what's one of them? One function that has its second derivative as a constant and that constant is minus one. So if I want the second derivative to be a constant, what am I looking at? X squared. I'm looking at X squared. And I just want to figure out how many X squareds to get a one. So some number of x squareds, and how many do I want? Minus a half, good, good, minus a half. Because x squared would give me two, but I want minus one, so I need minus a half of them. Okay, that's the particular solution. Now, throw in all the solutions. I can add in any solution that has a zero on the right side. So what functions have second derivative equals zero? X is good. Uh, I'm looking for two because it's a second derivative, second order equation. What's the other guy? Constant, good. So let me put the constant first, C, say, and DX. Two constants that I can play with, and what use am I going to make of them? I'm going to use those to satisfy the two boundary conditions. And it won't be difficult. If I, if I, so I, you could say plug in the, the first boundary condition, learn it, get an equation for the constants, plug in the second, get another equation. We'll have two boundary conditions, two equations, two constants. Everything's going to come out. So if I plug in u of zero to be zero, what do I learn? C is zero, right? If I plug in, is that right? If I plug in zero, then that's zero already. This is zero already, so I just learned that C is zero. So C is zero. And now I plug in, now I, so I'm down to one constant, one, one uh, unused boundary condition. Plug that in, U of one is minus a half. What's D? It's a half. D is a half. So can I close this up? Is a half. X. DX is a half. Now, I just always pays to look back. At X equals zero, that's obviously zero. At X equal one, it's zero because those are the same and it, I get zero. Okay. So minus a half X squared plus a half X. Okay. That was, you know, that, that's the kind of differential equation and solution that we're looking for, not, not complicated nonlinear stuff. Okay, so now I'm ready to move to the difference equation. So again, this is the major step. How do you, we're replacing this by, uh, oh, I'll, I'll draw a picture of this from zero to one. And if I draw a graph that, I think I get a parabola, right? A parabola that has, has to go through here. So it's some parabola like that. 
that would be always good to draw a graph of the solution. Okay. Now, what do I get here? Moving to the difference equation. So that, that's the equation, and notice it's boundary conditions. Those boundary conditions just copied this one because I've chopped this up. So this is how, how I've got I equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this is 1, the last point, then is 6, H. H is 1, 6. What's going to be the size of my matrix and my vector and my unknown U here? How many unknowns am I going to have? Let's just get the overall picture right. What are the unknowns going to be? They're going to be U1, U2, U3, U4, and U5. Those are unknown. Those will be some values. I don't know where. Maybe something like this because they'll be sort of like that one. And this is not an unknown U U6. This is not an unknown U0. Those are the ones we know. So this is what the solution to a difference equation looks like. It gives you a discrete set of unknowns. And then, of course, MATLAB or any code could connect them up by straight lines and give you a, 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 a function. But it's, the heart of it is these five values. OK. OK. Good. So, and those five values come from these equations. This is I, I'm, I'm introducing this subscript stuff, but I won't need it all the time because you'll see the picture. This equation applies for I equal 1 up to 5. Five inside points. And then you notice how when I is 1, this needs U0, but we know U0. And when I is 5, this needs U6, but we know U6. So it's a closed 5 by 5 system, and it will be our matrix. That minus 1, 2, minus 1 is what sits on the matrix. When we close it with the two boundary conditions, it chops off the zeroth column, you could say, and chops off the sixth column and leaves us with the 5 by 5 problem. And yeah. I guess this is not, this is a step not to jump past because it, it, it takes a little practice. Can you see, you see I've written the same thing two ways. Let me write it a third way. Let me write it out clearly. So now here I'm going to complete this matrix with a 2 and a minus 1 and a 2 and a minus 1. And now it's 5 by 5. and those might be U, but I don't know if they are, so let me put in U1, U2, U3, U4, and U5. Do you see? Oh, and divide by H squared. I'll often forget that. So I'm asking you to see something that, that if you haven't, after you get the hang of it, it's like automatic. But I have to remember, it's not automatic. Things aren't automatic until you've done them a couple of times. So do you see that that is a, is a concrete statement of this? This delta x squared is the h squared. And you see those differences. When I do that multiplication, that they produce those differences. And now, what's my right-hand side? Well, I've changed the right-hand side to 1 to make it easy. So this right-hand side is all 1s. And this is the, the problem that MATLAB would solve, or whatever code, finite difference code. It's a, I get, I've got to a linear system, 5 by 5. It's fortunately, the matrix is not singular. The matri there is a solution. How does MATLAB find it? It does not find it by finding the inverse of that matrix. Monday's lecture will quickly review how to solve 
five equations in five unknowns. It's by elimination, I'll tell you the key word. And that's what every code does. And sometimes you would have to exchange rows, but not for a positive definite matrix like that. It'll just go bzz right through. When it's tridiagonal, it'll go like the, with the speed of light. And you'll get the answer. And those five answers will be these five heights, u1, u2, u3, u4, and u5. And we could figure it out. Actually, I think section 1, 2 gives the formula for this particular model problem for any size, and particular for 5 by 5. And there is something wonderful for this special case. The five points fall right on the correct parabola. They're exactly right. So that th for this particular case, when the solution was a quadratic, the exact solution was a quadratic, a parabola, it will turn out, and, we, and that quadratic f matches these boundary conditions, it will turn out that, that, those, that those points are right on, the, right on the money. So that's you could call is like super convergence or something. I mean, that's, that won't happen every time, other, otherwise, uh, Life would be like too too easy, you know. It's a good life, but it's not that good, as a as a as a as a rule. Okay, okay. So they fall right on that uh, they fall right on that curve, and I could, uh, and 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 we can say what those numbers are. Actually, we know what they are. I actually, I guess I could find them. What are those numbers then? Uh, and of course, the one over h squared is what's one over h squared? The, just to not forget, one over h squared there, uh, h is what? One six squared is going to be a thirty six. So there's a there's a if I bring it up here, bring the h squared up here, it would be. Uh, times a 36, or well, let me leave, leave it here, 36, okay. And, and I'm just saying that these numbers would come out right. Maybe I'll just do the first one. What's the, the exact u1, u2, and u, u1 and u2 would be what? The exact u1, ooh, oh shoot, I've got to figure it out. Uh, I, if I plug in x equal 1, 6, do we want to do this? Plug in x equal to 6? No, we don't. Uh, we don't. Got something better to do with our lives. But if we, uh, if, we, if we put that number in, whatever the heck it is, in this one, we would find out it came out right. Okay. The fact that it comes out right is, is, is important. But I'd like to move on to uh, a similar problem. But this one is going to be free fixed. So if this problem was like uh, having an elastic bar hanging under its own weight, and these would be the displacements of the uh, points on the bar, and fixed at the ends, now I'm freeing up the top end. I'm not making u0,0 zero zero anymore. I better maybe use a different blackboard because that's that, that's so important that uh, uh, I don't want to erase it. Okay, so I'll take. Let me take the same problem. Uniform bar, uniform load. But I'm go and I'm going to fix u of one. That's fixed. But I'm going to free this end. And from a differential equation point of view, that means I'm going to set the slope at 0 to be 0. u prime at 0 is 0. OK. That's going to have a different solution. <coughs> change the boundary conditions, it's going to change the answer. Let's find the solution. So how, how, here's another differential equation. 
Same equation, different boundary conditions, so how do we go? Well, I had the general solution over there, it still works, right? U of x is still minus one-half x squared, the particular solution that gives me the one, plus the cx plus d that gives me zero and zero for second derivatives, but gives me the possibility to satisfy the two boundary conditions. Okay, and uh, now again, plug in the boundary conditions to find C and D. Okay, the slope is zero at zero. What does that tell me? Okay, I have to plug that in. There, here's my solution. I'll plug in, I have to take its derivative and set, set X to zero. Okay, so its derivative is a 2X or, or a minus X or something, which is zero. The derivative of that is c, and the derivative of that is zero. What am I learning from that left, left the free boundary condition? C is zero, right? C is zero, because the slope here is c, and it's supposed to be zero, so c is zero. Now the other boundary condition, plug in x equal one. I want to get the answer zero. The answer I do get is minus a half at x equal one plus d. So what is d then? What's d? Let me raise that. So what do I what do I learn about d? It's one half. It's that that I need one half. So the answer is is minus a half of x squared plus a half. Not a half x, as it was over there, but a half. Okay, and now let's graph it. Always pays to graph these things between x equals zero and one. What, what's, what does this look like? It starts at a half, right, at x equals zero, and it's a parabola. Right? It's a parabola, and I know it goes through this point. What else do I know? Slope starts at, the slope starts at zero. The other, the boundary condition, the free condition at the left-hand end, so the slope starts at zero, so the parabola comes down like that. It's like half a, where that was a symmetric bit of a parabola, this is just half of it. The slope is zero, and uh, so that's a graph of u of x. Okay, now I'm ready to take to replace it by a difference equation. Okay, so what'll be the difference equation? It'll be the same equation for the minus u double prime. No change. So minus u I, I plus one minus two u i minus u i minus one over h squared equals, uh, I'm taking f of x to be one, so let's stay with one. And now what, okay, big moment. What boundary conditions? What boundary conditions? Well, this guy is pretty clear. That says u n plus one is zero. What do I do for zero slope? What do I do for zero slope? Okay, let me suggest one possibility. It's not the greatest, but one possibility for zero slope is u one minus u zero over h, that's the approximate slope, should be zero. So that's my choice for the left-hand boundary condition. It says u1 is u0. It says that u1 is u0. Okay. So now, now I've got, uh, I've got again, five equations for five unknowns, u1, u2, u3, u4, and u5. I'll write down what they are. Well, you know what they are for, so this thing divided by h squared is all ones. 
just like before. And of course, all these uh, rows are not changed. But the first row is changed because we have a new boundary condition at the left end. And it's this. So u1, well, u0 isn't in the picture, but it, 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 it you know, previously what happened to u0? When, when, when i is 1, I'm in the first equation here, that's where I'm looking. i is 1, it had a u0, gone. In this case, it's not gone. u0 comes back in, u0 is u1. That might, ooh, don't let me do this wrong. Ah, don't let me do it worse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. There we go. Good. Okay. Thanks. Please. Last time I videotaped, I, lecture 10 had to fix up lecture 9 uh, because I don't go in. Professor Lewin in the physics lectures, he cheats. Doesn't cheat, but he, he, he goes into the lectures afterwards and fixes them. But I, you get exactly what it looks like. So, so now it's fixed, I hope. But don't let me screw up. OK. So now what's, what's, what's on this top row? Well, I have mi when, you, when i is 1, I have minus u2. That's fine. I have two u1s, as before. But now I have a minus u1, because u0 and u1 are the same. So I just have a 1 of there. That's our matrix that we call T. The top row is changed. The top row is free. This is the equation T u divided by h squared is the right-hand side, ones. Ones of five, I would call that. Ones of, ones uh, properly, I would call it ones of five, one. Because the MATLAB command ones wants uh, matrix, and it's a matrix with five rows, one column. Okay. But it's T, that's the important thing. And would you like to guess what the uh, solution looks like? In particular, is it again exactly right? Is it right on the money? Or if not, why not? Just, I'm, you know, the computer will tell us, of course. It will tell us whether we get agreement with this. This is the exact solution here, and this is the exact parabola, with starting with zero slope. So, but I solved this problem. Oh, let me see. I didn't get u1, u2 to u5 in there, so it didn't look right. u1, u2, u3, u4, and u5, and that's the right-hand side. Sorry about that. So that's t divided by h squared, t with that top row changed, times u is the right-hand side. OK. By the way, I better just say, what was the reason that we came out exactly right on this problem? Would we come out exactly right if it was some general load f of x? No. No. Finite differences can't do miracles. I mean, they, they, can't, they, they have no way to know what's happening to f of x between the mesh points, right? If I took this to be f of x and took this at the five points, at these five points, this wouldn't know what f of x is in between. Couldn't be exactly right. It's exactly right in this lucky, special case because of course, it gets the right, it has the right ones, but also because the reason it is exactly right is that second differences of quadratics are exactly right. That, that's what we checked on this board that I, that I, that's underneath there. Second differences of squares came out perfectly, and that's why the second differences of this guy give the right answer. So that guy is, is, is the answer to both the differential and the difference equation. OK. I had to say that word about why was it exactly right. It was exactly right because second differences of squares are exactly right. Now again, we have second differences of squares. So you could say exactly right, 
or no here? What are you betting? How many think, yeah, it's going to come out on the, par on the parabola? Nobody. Right. Everybody thinks there's something going to miss here. And why? Why am I going to miss something? Yeah. It's a first order approximation at the left boundary. Exactly right. Exactly right. It's a first order approximation to take this, and I'm not going to get it right. That first order approximation, that error of size h, is going to uh, penetrate over the whole interval. It'll be biggest here. Actually, I think it turns out, and the book has a graph, I think it comes out wrong by one-half h there. One-half h, first order. And then, it, 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 of course, it's discrete, so it's, and of course, it's straight across, because that's the boundary condition, right? And then it starts down. It gets sort of closer, 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 and gets, of course, it's right at the end. But there's an error. The difference between you, the true you, and the computed you is of order h. So you could say, all right, if h is small, I can live with that. But as I said, in the end, you really want to get second order accuracy if you can. And here, on a simple problem like this, we should be able to do it. So the, uh, what I've done already uh, covers section 1.2, but then there's a note, a worked example at the end of 1.2 that tells you how to upgrade to second order. And maybe we've got a moment to see how would we do it. What would you suggest that I do differently? I'll get a different matrix. I'll get a different discrete problem, but that'll be OK. I can solve that just as well. And what shall I replace that by? Because that, that was the guilty party, as you said. That was guilty. That's, not, that's only a first order approximation to zero slope at zero. You could say uh, all right, here, a couple of ways we could go. This is a correct second order approximation at what, at what mesh point? That is a correct second order approximation to u prime equals zero, but not at that point or at that point where? Halfway between. If, if, I, if I was looking at a point halfway between, that, that would be centered there. That would be a centered difference, and it would be good. But we're not looking there. So, what, so I'm looking here. So what do you suggest I do? Well. I've got to center it. I, essentially, I'm going to use u minus 1. I'm going to use u minus 1. And let me just say what the effect is. The effect is, you remember we started with the usual second difference here, 2 minus 1 minus 1. This is what got chopped off with a fixed method. It got brought back here by our first order method. Our second order method will, you see what's likely to happen? That minus 1 is going to show up where? Over here to center it around 0. So that guy will make this into a minus 2. Now that matrix is still fine. It's not one of our special matrices. I, I, when I say fine, it's not beautiful, is it? It's got, it's got one like, like uh, uh, flaw. It needs, uh, what do you call it when you have your face? Cosmetic surgery or something. It, it, it needs a, a small improvement. But w so what's the matter with it? It's not symmetric. symmetric. It's not symmetric. And uh, a person isn't happy with an unsymmetric problem approximation to a perfectly symmetric thing. But, so I could just divide that row by 2. If I divide that row by 2, which you, you won't mind if I do that, make that 1 minus 1, and make this a half. I div divided the first equation by 2. 
Uh, look in the notes if you, in, the, in the text if you can. Uh, and the result is now it's right on. It's, it's exactly on. Because we again, the solution, the true solution is squares. This is now second order, and we'll get it exactly right. And, 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 and I say all this for two reasons. One is to emphasize again that the boundary conditions are critical and that they penetrate into the region. The second, con second reason for my saying this is looking forward way into October. So let me just say, the finite element method, which you may know a little about, you may have heard about, it's, a, it's another, this was finite differences. Course is starting with finite differences because that's the most direct way you just go for it. You've got derivatives, you replace them by differences. But a, a, another approach, which turns out to be great for big codes and also turns out to be great for making, for keeping the properties of the problem, the finite element method, you'll see it. You'll see it when it's, it's weeks away, but when it comes, notice. The finite element method automatically produces that first equation. Automatically gets it right. So that's uh, pretty special. And, and so the finite element method just has, the, it produces that second order accuracy that we're, that we're, we have to, uh, we didn't get automatically for finite differences. Okay, uh, questions on t today uh, or on the homework. Uh, so the homework is really wide open. It's, it's really just a chance to start to see, to, if, I mean the real homework is read those two sections of the book to capture what these two lectures have done. So uh, Monday I'll see you, uh, we'll do elimination, we'll solve these equations quickly and then move on to uh, the inverse matrix, uh, more, more understanding of these problems. Thanks. <laughs>